Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 2 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from January 2010. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. In question 2, two horizontal forces of magnitude 12 newtons and 19 newtons act at a point. Given that the angle between the two forces is 60 degrees, calculate in part 1 the magnitude of the resultant force and in part 2 the angle between the resultant and the 12 newton force. In order to answer this question, I'm going to draw a diagram of these two forces. All we know from the question is that one of them is 12 newtons, one of them is 19 newtons, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. But the way I draw it can help me a lot when I'm solving this problem. And I've drawn it so that the 12 newtons force is in the x direction. I didn't have to do that, but it will make the working out easier later on. So we've got 12 newton force going along in the x direction, we've got 19 newton force going up here. The resultant force is going to be somewhere in between the 12 and the 19 newton force and it should be slightly closer to the 19 newton force because that force is larger so it will have more effect. In order to find the magnitude of this resultant force, we're going to resolve in the x direction and in the y direction. Notice how I've labelled the 12 newton force A and the 19 newton force B, that's to help me in this table that I'm going to draw here. So, I've got my forces, and I'm going to resolve in the x direction and the y direction, and I've got forces A and B. The first question I need to answer is how much of the 12 newton force goes in the x direction? And the answer to that is all of it. So that's going to be 12 here. How much of it goes in the y direction? Well, as it's completely in the x direction, there's nothing in the y direction. Force B is at an angle of 60 degrees to the x direction, so the component of the 19 newton force going along in the x direction is 19 cos 60. In the y direction, as the angle is not included here, it's going to be 19 sin 60. Now we're going to find the components of the resultant force in the x direction and the y direction, and all we have to do is add the separate parts. So here we've got 12 plus 19 cos 60. Well, cos 60 is a half, and half of 19 is 9.5, and 12 plus 9.5 is 21.5. In the y direction, we've got 19 sine 60. We could leave this as 19 sine 60, but just so I know the rough size of it, I'm going to work it out. That's going to be 16.45 and so on. What I'm going to do with this 16.45 is store it in my calculator so I can use the value later. To do that, I press the shift button here and then the STO button, and then I choose any of the red letters up here. I'm going to choose A. So this value here now is stored as the red letter A on my calculator. Now that I've got an X and a Y component, I can redraw this diagram with two equivalent forces but this time they'll be at right angles. So I'm going to have 21.5 newtons going horizontally in the x direction and 16.45 newtons going vertically in the y direction. And my resultant force will go from the beginning of this vector to the end of this vector. Now that they're at right angles to each other, I can use Pythagoras to work this out. I can say that r squared equals 21.5 squared plus 16.45 squared. From here I can use my calculator to work out r. To access the value I've got stored, I use the alpha button up here and then press the letter and I get 733. So to find R, all I need to do is square root that and I get 27.1 if I round it to three significant figures. Next I need to find the angle between the resultant and the 12 newton force. This is where drawing the diagram carefully helps me out. Because I've got the 12 newton force along here and my resultant going here, all I need to do is find the angle in here. As I've now got a right angle triangle, I can use Sokotoa here. I've got the opposite and the adjacent side, so I'm going to do tan of theta equals 16.45 over 21.5. Now you may have been thinking earlier, why didn't I use the answer button here instead of storing the value for this 16.45? And the answer is that I knew I was going to need to use it again over here. And the answer in my calculator now is stored as 27.1. But because I stored it as A, it will still be in my calculator. So all I need to do now to find theta is inverse tan of 16.45, which I stored in my calculator as A, over 21.5. And that gives me 37.4 to three significant figures.